Hey everybody, happy Thursday. I hope y'all are excited. Tonight we're gonna have Father Joe Laramie. He lives in St. Louis right now. He's a Jesuit priest. And I'm so excited actually to have him on. I, um, I've been doing, he has this beautiful book. We're gonna talk about it because it's been super fruitful for me. But here in just a second, I'll invite him to join. And then we'll get started because um, I have a whole big long list of questions for him. So I hope you're excited about that. All right. Let me he's coming hold on yeah so if I don't know how your week's been going quarantine's been yeah the last couple of days uh, we'll see how it goes this week but I um, I have to tell you these have been a bright spot in my Thursdays and my Sundays I hope they have been that way for you and if you've have, you're not you're missing them or whatever you can always watch the replay and then I'm putting them over on YouTube so um, hold on one second all right I'm back I had a quick message from him all right here we go here he comes it's always waiting here we go Catherine Hey, hey, how are you? Good to see you. I love the flags in the back. Is that your office? Hey, great. Of Thanks for having me. This oh, is my best... bedroom. I love it. <laughs> yep. Which is which is also my <laughs> office as of you know. I know I was ago. just doing a Zoom call in my bedroom. So yes, now I'm in the dining room. Everyone, every room is working like dual. <laughs> it's been busy. I thought I might see you like juggling as you Pretty came much. on. Yep. Do you have all your stuff? <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Uh, we, we, we will save that now. for the end because that's Good like thing. the piece de resistance. We'll wait till the end for that. Um, I was just telling everyone. So I, on, I was telling, I was telling you this actually <laughs> right. on Sunday, I started your, um, your book. So it's about in the heart of Christ. So that's what it is. And I actually didn't know too much about St. Ignatius. Mm -hmm. Do you have yours too? Love it. And, um, so it's a, 10, I mean, it's a 10 day retreat or a 10 exercise retreat. So you can do it, like you said, over 10 days or 10 weeks or whatever. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I've already, and I, I want you to know, I never mm -hmm. do this, but I have like booked mark pages in there and I never, ever, 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 ever do that. So Ooh. there's some good stuff in here. I think <laughs> the biggest thing that I've taken. So on exercise three, you ask us to write mm -hmm. down and think about our 10 biggest spiritual moments ever. And, you know, initially when I started writing them down, they were like the really good ones. Like, oh, remember that time when we like met the Pope? Like, that's a big one. Yes, check. But as I spent more time with it, mm -hmm, some of mm -hmm. the things that came across to me were really, really hard spiritual moments that I could see the fruit of. And I was not expecting mm -hmm. that. You're a stinker. I wasn't expecting that, Father Joe. So that was so good. <laughs> hey, yeah. You know, that's flame the Holy Spirit. Um, yeah, that one's, that's been fun. For me, uh, I've done that at some Theology on Taps uh, with some young adult groups around St. Louis. And uh, yeah, I'm struck by kind of how fast people move into pretty deep waters. Uh, you know, I think for many of us, maybe two or three pop out right, right away. And those could be some big ones like your wedding day, the birth of your first child. And, you know, for me, my ordination would be real high on that list. But you're right. Yes, yeah, you kind of sit with it a bit, um, you know, we're just drawn in the Lord to reflect a little deeper. I, okay. I live right by a fire okay. station, if you can hear that. That's all <laughs> right. In urban St. Louis here. And um, yeah, you're right. Some of those kind of more gritty moments where, you know, there was some, maybe some suffering, but also like an outpouring of yeah. grace or somebody who stepped in at just the right time. So, so tell us, great. so if you had to describe like Ignatian spirituality, like what's your, what's your elevator pitch? And mm -hmm. <laughs> Sure. Um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, everybody's got their own little spin on it. Something like an incarnate Ooh, mysticism. That's okay. Um, so it's uh, just that close relationship with the Lord. And, you know, Jesus is the head coach, the director, the king, like he's the one doing everything. But we're there to open our hearts and, you know, the wisdom of the saints can help us grow in that relationship. So, I mean, it is this close communion with the Lord, but also one that's very much incarnate in our daily lives um, where you're living it out. Yeah. 
as a mom, as a teacher, as a priest, whatever our calling might be. Um, you know, one of those buzzwords is uh, like finding God in all things. And, you know, for Ignatius, that's not like kind of, a, I don't know, a sort of cheap poster you would throw up on your wall, but more like, you know, this is sort of the fruit of that close walk with Christ, that he's with me every day, every moment of the day, so that more and more I can get kind of attuned to, to his mind, to his heart, seeing how he's at work in my day and sort of orient my whole being. I love, him. I mean, you do this in person in your social media platforms, but you also do it in the book. It's like, you're very relatable. Like, cause I think sometimes I read spiritual books or I have spiritual discussions with people and I'm like, I mean, they're deep and they're holy and they're beautiful, but they're also really hard for me to relate to. And so as I'm reading this course, remember, I'm going to have to play like the Protestant card here. So I'm still learning about all the saints, but I had no idea about um, the relationship between um, St. Ignatius and his roommate who are both Jesuits and also saints. So what was it about the Jesuits that as you're kind of navigating the, the waters of priesthood and what you want to do, how is it that you kind of came to know the Jesuits and how did you know that that was the place where you wanted to land? Sure, sure. Um, yeah, let me give you a quick nugget on St. Ignatius yeah. and then a little of my own story. And um, yeah, you're right. So his, his roommate um, was Francis That's Xavier. Right. Um, who was an athlete, a lawyer from a wealthy family. He was going places. Um, and so, and they were roommates at the University of Paris, which I got to imagine is a pretty good, yeah, great place to be in so school. Uh, you know, you got the, the perfect coffee, the, the bread is just always yes. just that perfect crunch, yes. you know, that first bite. And uh, yeah, in a sense, you know, this is like the best move ever by housing. <laughs> it's like the poster. They should have so put that on a brochure. I, I work on a college... <laughs> That's right. I work on a college campus. I know that, you know, and these folks are trying to pair up people like, okay, they have matching interests or their majors match up. But um, yeah, Ignatius is kind of like in the midst of his own conversion at that point. Um, Francis Xavier is, you know, maybe a kind of Christmas Easter Catholic, like, you know, he's on board, maybe not especially passionate about it. And all the more so really has his ambition on, you know, a lot of worldly success. And so Ignatius really just through friendship, through conversation, it really just wins this guy over. Um, to fast forward ahead, Xavier becomes this great missionary to Asia, um, traveling around to India, Japan, um, just off the coast of China, um, kind of beloved in those places and beyond. You know, briefly myself, I went to a Jesuit all boys and you were in school, St. Louis, and right? Also, so you were, uh, you've St. always Louis been in Slough or, or in the area, right? Okay, okay. That's right. That's I saw right. it. Yeah, so one of my little <laughs> the uh, flags here yeah. is St. Louis U. Love you can it. just see the edge of the Cardinals baseball. Um, so yeah, from St. Louis, um, just really good experiences at those schools, some good friendships that I maintain, you know, buddies who I've now presided at their weddings, I've baptized their kids, um, and meeting some great Jesuits, some guys who were younger, maybe in studies at the university. So we have about 30 young men who is part of their formation, take classes at SLU. I had some undergrad philosophy and theology classes where I was even yeah. sitting next to those guys who were oh. oh, hold on. There we go. There we go. Of uh, faith that I found in them. Also some older, wiser Jesuits who were teachers, in addition to some of the younger Jesuits I saw around campus. So, you know, in a nutshell, I think it was just their friendship, their example, um, and seeing Christ. So that was Catholic tuition money well spent for your parents. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose but so. But yeah, we yeah, all I find our vocations, so. I think, um, in different places. People, relationships influence us, and we have a chance to meet people and say, oh, I hadn't thought about that or I hadn't viewed like I know for me personally when I meet other moms I'm like oh I hadn't thought about mothering that way or being that kind of mom like they're very inspiring to me so um, that's a beautiful gift that you were able to have relationship mm -hmm. with them kind of in your formative years and then mm -hmm. you show up but you're like all in mm -hmm. SLU so I mean this just happened but you've been the campus director <laughs> at SLU for how long for the Catholic campus ministry program Yes, I've been two years on staff. Um, yeah, two years as a campus minister. I'm not the head guy, which 
frankly, is fine. I think it gives <laughs> me a little more freedom to hang out with kids and right. go to basketball games, you know, have coffee in the lobby of one of the dorms. Um, so, yeah, a real grace there, especially to be back at my alma mater. And, you know, again, some of those examples of those younger Jesuits yeah. trying to just carry on that tradition of, you know, just friendly chats in the quad or walking up and down the, the main drag, um, as well as retreats and service projects, now yeah. staying in mass for students. So it's so really you've taught high school lesson. and you've been in college. So how do you feel about those mm -hmm. two groups? Like, do you, do you naturally gravitate towards one or the other? And like, what do you love about <laughs> those groups of kids and young adults, I should say? Sure. Sure. Yeah, I was, um, yeah, three years at Regis High School in Denver, Colorado, all boys. God bless and then you. Three For years boys, at all Rock boys. High. <laughs> That's right. So, you know, I'd say really the bigger transition has been from like an all male totally. setting to working with the women. Um, I love so it. I would say I've, awesome. I've been studying the feminine mind mm -hmm. now Good luck for with a that. couple years. Good luck with that, Father um, <laughs> You know, uh, yeah, much can be said. <laughs> I, I feel like the guys, I understand them. You know, I went to an all-boys school. I live with all guys currently. Um, you know, in certain ways, it's a little simpler, a little more straightforward. Um, kind of what you see is what you get. Um, but, you know, the women at SLU are just incredibly talented. So often they're committed to service and faith. They're, you know, if anything, their problem is like they're doing too much good and they don't have time to sleep or, you know, take a break yeah. now and then. So uh, that's a Yeah, challenge. I mean, we have, so we have a college kid. He, um, he's at a co-ed university, so he's at Texas A&M. Mm -hmm. And he's a freshman, so he just started last mm -hmm. fall, sort of got interrupted this spring. But I know that I have some, mm -hmm. some, men and women on here who have either adult children or who are getting ready to launch a kid to college or, you know, just to post high school. Mm -hmm. And what do they do after that? So I guess I'm really curious since you spent mm -hmm. time with high school kids and you spent time with college kids and knowing like that sort of butterfly experience as they go from the caterpillar in high school to butterflying mm -hmm. and whatever in college. I mean, <laughs> what's your advice to moms mm -hmm. and dads who are getting ready to launch a kid? Like, you see them on the other side. You spent time with them. I know for me personally, mm -hmm. it was hard to let them go. But then, then I sent them to a college campus, and I'm like, now here you go. <laughs> Good luck. And I spent a lot of time praying. But what, what advice do you have to those parents who are getting ready to send their kids off and, and help them send them mm -hmm. off in the best way possible and how to love them while they're there? Sure, sure. Um yeah, you know, keep loving them, keep praying for them. Um, I'd say, you know, trust that the the lessons they learned at home and at church and in grade school and high school, that, that those do stay with them. Um, they do still listen to their parents. They do care what you think. You know, they may not always, like, obviously show not always. their uh, attention, but, like, you know, they they think about it. They they mentioned to me like, yeah, my mom said this, or, you know, my dad's encouraging me to try that. So like, they do take you seriously, you know, and just that balance of like, it, I mean, I do tell parents like, okay, once they leave your house, there's not a lot you can do like on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, you can't make them brush their teeth or go to church. Now you can trust, okay, you develop those habits at home. I'm going to hope and pray those continue. You know, now and then they have to, like, kind of bounce off the bottom. And then, you know, it's like a Super Bowl, though. You know, you hit and then you maybe bounce off yeah. a little higher. Uh, you know, they maybe talk to me after breaking up with the girlfriend. Or, yeah, I got a C- in organic chemistry. Maybe I'm not supposed to be a doctor. Like, yeah. that's okay, you know. Like, we need doctors, but not everybody in the world needs Amen. to be a doctor. And if that's not right. a good fit for you, what's the I mean, what's the else. thing that they bring to you most, Father Joe? Like, what are college kids – trusting like what information are they trusting you with that they're really struggling with i'm mm -hmm. curious to know that from your perspective having served mm -hmm. them for a while sure you know i'd say a big one is is discernment basically you know they may not use that word right away um and this is saint ignatius uh writes quite a bit about this so discernment means making a good decision okay in many different channels of life. Um, that can be your That's major, good. that can be your career, that can be, you know, hey, I'm dating this guy and 
is this going anywhere or do I need to make a break and kind of let him go? But, you know, that they're kind of looking for, like, yeah. how do I make a good decision? You know, is it just a gut feeling? Is Am I going to get a sign from above? You know, I tell them, like, okay, have a habit of prayer. Um, you don't want to try to go zero to 60 in five seconds, you know? Like, okay, I haven't been praying this semester, and now <laughs> I need to decide my major. Like, well, it's way better if you got a foundation and then build the house rather than yeah. the other way around. Um you know, and just these little things that are, okay, you're talking to me. That's a good thing. Um, talk to mom and dad. Bounce this off them. What's your favorite class? What are you good at? Um, where do you feel the Lord is drawing you as you pray about these things? So, you know, for Ignatius, I think it's this kind of integrated system of decision making. It's not just a bolt of lightning, but it's a uh, kind of way of prayer. So what way is it that parents are messing up? Like, where do we interfere when you're like, if you guys would just back off of X, Y, and Z, that would make it better when they hit college. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, speak, speak freely. Know, I dealt with parents like, quite a like, bit I don't in high have school. a kid at your college, so <laughs> share away, be honest. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. This, this yeah, is a safe space, safe. right? That's, that's a college phrase <laughs> these days. <laughs> um, nope. Hold on. There we go. Uh-oh. Father Joe froze on me. I don't know if he froze for y'all, too. Maybe it's my Wi-Fi. It hasn't been super great today. Ah. Uh, no, no, keep no, no. I'm sorry if we uh, froze there for a second. So I'd say, yeah, yeah, moms and dads, let them make some small and medium-sized mistakes. You know, um, if they get a C plus, like, you know, you can talk about it. Like, you don't have to throw them a party just because, uh, you know, you celebrate everything. Like, okay, got a C plus. Hey, let's talk about that. Um, were you doing the work? Uh, is this a class that you want to pursue further? Um, you know, clubs and friendships too, like, okay, you're trying an acapella club or, uh, trying to get on the lacrosse team. These might be okay things like kind of let them try some stuff out. That's reasonably wholesome. You know, I, the guardrails are there, like the 10 commandments and the law of the land. Those things are reasonable to pursue, but to, to just, you know, kind of, they don't have to get hundred yeah. percent. I think that's the hardest thing as a parent is because our whole life is oriented and, I don't even call it helicopter parenting, but like a lawnmower parenting. Cause we were trying to like mow down all the obstacles. <laughs> right. And then they get to college and I'm like, I don't mm -hmm. know the obstacles, please tell. And then they're, they're also not communicating as well mm -hmm. because they're trying to be like their own person and figure stuff out. And for me, that was the hardest part was not only mm -hmm. to let them go, but to let them fail in mm -hmm. things that I didn't even know they were failing in until we would get like the progress report. And I'm like, what is this? Like, what is happening here? So uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> that it was a growing year for yep. a lot of us. It was a growing year mm -hmm. for our son. It was a big growing year mm -hmm. for us. And um, it was a growing year that I was mm -hmm. not expecting. Like I was like, I've got motherhood figured out. Like we've been at this for 19, 18 years. I have six kids. It can't be that hard. And then we sent a kid to college. I was like, harder than I thought. So uh, I guess maybe a little bit of solidarity for mamas who are watching to say, mm -hmm. you're going to make it like find your people. And mm -hmm. um, that's really good advice, Father Joe. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just one more quick one. Look at Jesus as yeah. the ultimate yeah. father figure. He lets his guys make some mistakes. You know, the disciples are not straight A students, you know, like, you know, you tried to cast out that demon and it didn't quite work. Let's talk about that. Um, you know, like I told you to do something and you didn't. Yeah. Let's talk about that. You know, Christ as, uh, just the model for all of us. So I want to switch gears a little bit. That's really good. Thank you. Um, so you spent some time in Belize. So I know a, a lot of times when people think about Jesuits, they think of mm -hmm. missionary work. Mm -hmm. So I would love to hear about, mm -hmm. um, maybe your most poignant moment while you were in Belize or the, or the thing that when you came back that you were most grateful for, for that experience in Belize. Sure. Um, yeah, great question. So I was there um, right after ordination for uh, a semester. And yeah, my superior loves to send guys there kind of, you know, while, while we're young and fresh to uh, just get a taste of that. Wow. So 
briefly, Belize is a, a very small country in Central America. It's a former British colony, so the yeah. official language is English, which sure. you know, makes it a nice place to visit, because for many of us, that's what we speak. And it's so small. It's like the size of Massachusetts. There's only maybe oh, 250,000 people in the country. But all these very interesting little cultures. So um, there are African descendants who live there, some of whom um, were on a slave ship that shipwrecked. And then they survived and like, wow. you know, had a little village and then kind of grew and thrived following that. Um, there are Mayans there who have their own language, their own culture. So these are indigenous people. They have their own sorts of pyramids that are, you know, a smaller scale, but something similar to what you might find in Egypt. Um, you've got uh, Latino folks from Guatemala or other parts of uh, Central America. And then a handful of like old British people who sort of hung out, liked it, stayed. So just really fun, great food, great music. So I was in this little village um, in the southern part of the country working with um, some Mayans in a few different little towns. Um, so one story I like to tell. So um, I'm in this old pickup truck that has literally, I think, 400,000 <laughs> miles. So <It's> like <laughs> that's a lot of zeros. And and these are hard miles. <laughs> um, you know, you could just like look through the fender and see the engine because it was all just rusted nice. out. But Nice. More or less still sort of was working. So I was with a younger Jesuit, um, a novice who was there for a few months. So he and I are on this trip. It's about a two hour drive out to this remote village. And it had rained um, in the last day or so. So these roads, you know, imagine like one of these like monster truck races you might see on, you know, Sunday daytime uh, ESPN or something. So, I mean, literally, like, I am flooring it as we get to the bottom of a hill so that I can make it up the next hill. And then we come down, and there's, like, a splash, and it's fun, but, all, like, <laughs> you know, and there are no uh, gas stations out there. There are no uh, mechanics around. So, okay, anyway, we hit this one bump, and just one of these moments where you say, okay, <laughs> This is bad. Maybe so you said maybe there was you this said a word fireball in that. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I think so. Um, this fireball comes out of the hood of the car. Um, I hear this thud, and then the truck just kind of rolls to a stop. So I look in the rearview mirror, and sure enough, the battery has fallen out. Of and the it's car. behind you. So I don't know a ton about. Oh my god. The the yes, the battery is smoldering. <laughs> like sitting by a mud puddle, I'm looking at it in the rearview mirror. Um, you know, turn to my buddy and say, uh, I guess we walk the rest of the way. So the sun is starting to set. Um, you know, I have, my map is literally like drawn on a dinner napkin by the older Jesuit. Who, you know, it says things like, there used to be a bridge here, question mark, not sure if it's still there. It's, you know, not, like way, it's not like ways that you, you can just punch this. it in and it tells you. <laughs> not... No, not quite. So we're walking, we're carrying our gear. So I'm supposed to say several masses, baptize some kids um, in this village. It's getting dark. Um, we can literally hear howler monkeys um, in the trees, which it's like, <laughs> like th this is legit. Okay. This really happens. So, okay. I'm walking with my buddy. I mean, we're, <laughs> we're a little shaken up, but also like, okay, we're together. Like we're praying the rosary a little bit as we go. It's getting dark, but the moon, there's a full moon. So actually, I can see the road in front of me because of the moon. Um, we walk for an hour or so. It's pitch black. Um, then I, I see what I think is someone in front of me, and I can see the gleam of the moonlight in his machine. That's not what I thought you were going to um, say. So a lot of guys... <laughs> A lot of guys will carry machetes for it's just okay. kind of an all-purpose like like farm out implement, there? like uh, you know. Okay. Okay. That's right. Yep. So he says, you know, something like uh, "Padre." I, you know, I speak a little bit Spanish, like "Si, sí, soy el padre." Um, are you the priest? Yep. And he says, "Come with me." Conmigo, like come, come with me. So basically, the villagers sent him. He's like a twenty-year-old to find us. So he walks us back, and sure enough, and we have to like kind of go through parts of the forest to, to get to this little village. We come to this little church and everybody in the village is there praying. And they have three candles 
in front of the altar. And then kind of the village elder comes out and says to me, uh, Father, we've been praying for you oh. um, all day. I was like, wow. Because I was supposed to be there at, you know, like four in the afternoon. It's now like nine o'clock at night. So they've been there just praying. <clears throat> so, you know, this <laughs> scary moment, exhausting, but also, okay, Christ present in my Jesuit buddy. Yeah. You know, we're encouraging each other. Um, Christ present in the natural world, like this moonlight that literally lights our path. Uh, Christ present in this young guy coming to get us. Christ present in the community. And then they're there. They want mass. Like, it's 9 o'clock, and I'm exhausted. But, but, okay, Father, you're late. Mass. But mass, we're doing mass. So, we saved you, so get you up know, here. I, I preach. That's right. You know, I baptize oh. these beautiful little kids. So um, a wild night. Wow, for I'm so glad that I had no idea that's what that story was. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I, uh, I was not expecting mm -hmm. you to say that. Ooh, I'm not a crier either. Wow, that was awesome. <laughs> you know, I love I love the missionary spirit because mm -hmm. I think it reminds us and I think it, in all of our lives, whether we've been on missionary, like we've gone to another country or we've gone to another state. I mean, mm -hmm. God sends us into missionary work to give us new experiences so that we can grow in relationship and, and, and trust with him. What a what a fantastic story mm -hmm. that not only that you live, but that you have the opportunity <laughs> to share. That's awesome. Oh, my gosh. All right. So I'm looking at the clock. I'm making sure we have time. All right. So, um, all right. So tell us, so how did you get started on juggling? Like that's your, um, so my brother juggles and every time he does it, I think, oh, I sure. can do that. <laughs> it's okay. a massive fail. Yeah. So how did that come about? Like, I know that's a thing, like that's, like, you're good at it. <laughs> sure. It's, it's a fun hobby. Um, my dad taught himself with a book in the eighties you know this is like pre YouTube and everything and then he taught me when I was about 10 years old um, I got to high school and there were a few other guys who could kind of do it and so we start kind of messing around there's an alumni at the school who came in this is this all boys Jesuit school um, and you know we get pretty good at this we start doing some shows uh, around the school for alumni events and then I started doing some kids birthday parties as well um, I love messing around with it around campus. It's, you know, it's eye catching. Is that like, a priest? Wait, there's a priest juggling. Like it's, especially with freshmen, like the first month of school. It's That's just gotta be a great fun. housebreaker. Um, you know, and they'll come up totally. Then I get to chat with them and I, I can kind of show them what I'm doing, but also like, Hey, where are you from? Or yeah, what are you studying here? Or, Hey, I do this retreat. You might want to check it out. It's coming up. Um, so, okay, basic shape, ready, right. and I'll show you in a second, is the okay. gateway arch, okay? So it's, okay. that's the shape, okay? I so, love this. Everybody, y'all take um, notes. Pay attention if you're watching. Right, you got a ball. Okay. Up like this, just super, super simple, simple, right? Just like okay. up and up, okay? It, you know, it's easy when I do it because I've been doing this for a long, long time. Okay? Notice notice, so, I'm not doing it with okay, you. Two, two is... Piece of cake. <laughs> two is just one plus okay. one, right? So, okay, up and up, okay? okay? So... This one goes up, kind of gets to the peak, and then this one comes underneath okay. of it. So again, sometimes people will try to do this, which is a different sort of thing. Okay, so just up okay. and up, okay? Again, looks easy when it I do it, It looks great. Right? Okay, three is just two plus one, sure. right? This is just basic math, all right? So, but it's the exact same thing as two, actually, but it, you just keep going, okay? Because two is just that. You just add. But three, you just add another one in there. So, so what's your... So What's something I also learned. Like, do you have certain things that like you <laughs> juggle easier than others? Like you do like the, the things, right? The big, what are they like? Pens. Sure. Yeah. I got, um, yeah, I got my clubs too. I'm, I'm I know to I'm impressed. Down, this is good. So okay. Tricky, but look, I'm like alone. scooting back. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm scooting kneeling back, now. To more room. I don't know if you can see this. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, you know, this looks cool and it is, uh, it's the exact same pattern. You know, they're just fancy sure, and they're flipping yeah. in midair, but um, it's the exact same thing. Okay, it. one more is, try oh, this. Yes, okay, yes, everybody's yes. got tons of these in their house, right? The great thing is these fall really slowly, okay? So you can kind of practice them to get a feel okay. for it a little bit, okay? And But the exact same pattern. So this one goes up. This one's going to come kind of under. So this is boy approved. Oh. So if you have boys and they want to learn how to juggle, give them the sacks. I love it. Ah, he froze on us. Hold on. 
That's so impressive that you're doing it sitting down and kneeling and it's still going. Okay, come back, Father Joe, where are you? This is getting good too. All right, come Holy Spirit. Let's see if we can see him. There we go. I love it. <laughs> totally boy approved. All yep. right. um, you know, what else? Of course, tennis balls. Tennis balls work fine. Something else I'll, I'll recommend is like okay. socks. Just take your socks, roll them up. They don't break anything. They're quiet. Uh, yes. Parents appreciate that. There's some nice YouTube videos. I've got a couple on my own little social media I sites. Love it. So, um, oh my you know, gosh, this is so great. I was waiting. <laughs> That's why I'm so glad we waited until the end to do that. Well, I always ask priests this every time. Um, <laughs> what is one way that the people that are watching this mm -hmm. now and also the people that watch later, what's one way that we can pray for you? Oh gosh. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, you know, I've been really just inspired by my lay friends during uh, the coronavirus, just their devotion, their commitment to family. I think for many of us, it has really deepened our love of the sacraments. Um, you know, I'll always take prayers from vocations um, to uh, Jesuit life and religious life, um, especially on our awesome. Jesuit college campuses. That we can absolutely do. Um, Father Joe, thank you for taking the time to spend with me, um, I know we're fellow Ave authors. We've both written books for Ave Maria Press, but um, <laughs> I'm going to say it again. So if you don't have this book and you're looking for just a good, um, just a good space for you to take time to spend in prayer and that it's not overwhelming and it's well-written and it's approachable, I highly recommend it. I'm doing it and I'm loving it. So thank mm -hmm. you for being so generous with um, your stories and uh, your mm -hmm. talents and also with your wisdom. So we very much appreciate it. Would you mind ending us um, with a blessing, Father Joe? Thank you. I'd be delighted. Um, yeah, I'm gonna close this with um, the Anima Christi prayer, which is a uh, favorite prayer of St. Ignatius Loyola. Um, Amen. Water from the side. We'll have him do it again because this one's good. I hadn't heard of this prayer before, so hold on. We'll wait till he friend freezes and then I'll have him do it again. Come, Holy Spirit. Oh, and then he left. Okay, so I'm going to read it to you just so that you hear it. So it's, um, it's Autumn and Christy. It says, soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from Christ's side, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. Hold on, here he comes. I'll let him do it. All right, he's back. Okay, you know, the Holy Spirit is always with us, but why? Okay. Not I know, not, so, not always so much. <laughs> All right, oh, we'll start it well, over. <laughs> okay, should I go from the top? Yeah, yeah, take it from the top, Happy Father to. Joe. Okay. okay. <laughs> Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within thy wounds, hide me. Permit me not to be separated from thee. From the wicked foe, defend me. At the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to thee. With the angels and saints, I may praise thee forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father and that the Son. Was beautiful. And the Thank you so much, Father Joe. Have a beautiful weekend. And um, I know that you're getting ready to go on to a new assignment, which I know that you'll be announcing mm -hmm. soon publicly, but um, many blessings in what you do and how you serve the church. Okay. So thank you so much. All right. See you later. Bye, Father <laughs> Joe.